athletes. And these gadget players are athletes. They play running back, wide receiver, possibly even quarterback. And really with these gadget players, what we're seeing a lot in college football now is the increase of quick, fast-footed guys that just get on the field. They almost are positionless, right? You can use them in the special teams. You can use them on offense. Hell, sometimes you can use them on defense when it's Hail Mary. But in looking at gadget guys, my top guy is John Marie Cherie for the a &M. He does his thing in special teams. He does his thing on offense, punt return, kick return. He's a super threat. He ended the season uh, with less than 500 yards receiving, but all-purpose yards, he has 826. He's a guy you got to have on your team, a guy that's almost irreplaceable. A lot of these gadget guys become irreplaceable in offenses that need big plays. And I think John Marie Sharid is part of the reason why Fort A&M's offense goes. So he is my top HBCU gadget player. We'll get into another top player, and that's Jakeem Smith. Jakeem Smith finished with a 77 pro football focus grade. That is the highest grade of any HBCU receiver that is returning. Jakeem Smith is a very uh, small frame guy. Around 5'10", uh, like 180 pounds, if that. Super quick guy, but he's a deep threat. He attacks the seams. <laughs> when I say a guy can take the top off, this guy takes the top off. Another year with rapport from quarterback C.J. Henry could prove valuable for this top-end wide receiver. Uh, I have him as one of my gadget guys because he takes a lot of jet sweeps. He catches screens. In the red zone, I noticed they give him they, Delaware State gives Raheem Smith the ball a lot in the red zone. They make the defense tackle this little dude, and they have a hard time tackling him. He's so elusive. I'm very high on Raheem Smith, and I think he'll be a great asset to his Delaware State team and a really good asset to Lee Hole and his new offense. Let's get into Eden James saying to Miak. Eden James out of Howard looks to be on pace for a game-breaking year. Last year, he, he didn't have any receptions. In the spring game, he catches the ball for 45 yards. Last year, he rushed the ball 70 times for 406 yards, two touchdowns. I think that was only the beginning. For a freshman to get that type of look shows that the offense and offensive coordinator trust you. As a running back, that's big, especially when you have a running back one back there in Jared Hunter. So I think Eden James solidified his position in this backfield last year and is now primed for an even bigger role this year on the receiving side. He's one of my top gadget guys because not only does he have top end speed, he is very hard to tackle. This guy runs hard. Okay. He's a little guy, but he runs hard. And when you have a guy like that, you just want to give him the ball as much as possible. And I'm sure that Larry's coach, Larry Scott and Eden James are going to eat this season for Howard. So, Another running back that I got my eyes on is Nico Duffy. This guy is a running back wide receiver. I was told that he was making the transition to wide receiver this spring. He was once the top running back at Alcorn State. He was on pace to break almost all of Alcorn's rushing records until this guy named Jarvian Howard comes into the fold and rushes for 1,200 yards last year. So now Nico Duffy is a spell back. As a spell running back, he's getting more receptions. He's moving around more as in the gadget fashion. And I've also been told that he's been moving more to receiver. So in understanding that he can catch the ball, he's already 6'1". He's around 200 pounds. He has the size of a receiver. With his frame and his look, he could get the ball even more often in times where Jarvie and Howard and the box is packed. I think that Nico Duffy has a definite shot to be a breakout candidate this year in the SWAC. And because of the situation that he's in for a consecutive year, I think Nico Duffy understands his role and executes perfectly. I think this Alcorn State team is going to have a great year this year. And I think that part of it is going to be predicated on how Nico Duffy plays. And then lastly, it's getting to Seven McGee. This is our newcomer on this list. He doesn't have many stats. Last year he played for Oregon. And at Oregon, he only had about 200 yards, 160 yards, all purpose, right? You tie in everything, the receiving, the rushing, the return, that's all he had. Now, for his Jackson State offense, this is going to be a totally different ball game. I think Coach Maurice Harris knows exactly what he wants to do with Seven McGee. I mentioned last week about this recruit they're just bringing in named Jaden Boosie. Jaden Boosie is another one of those guys that plays similar type of style as Seven McGee, a running back that has great receiving ability and also has Great balance. You're going to need a guy with great balance if you're going to give him the ball every now and then. If you're, only, if you're only giving him the ball 10 to 15 times a game, he's going to need great balance. And with Seven McGee, 
he to me he is naturally a running back with great hands and as a running back with great hands you naturally understand rushing lanes and as a quick guy with a coach that likes to use gadget receivers it's a match made in heaven i think seven mcgee does great things for jackson state this year i think that he can definitely run for about 400 yards and i think he can really catch the ball for about 300 yards if not more we'll look even further into the season and we'll make sure we follow up with these guys but of my gadget receivers and players seven mcgee is definitely one of my favorite now the two guys that didn't make the list but are really close were two quarterbacks in fact a quarterback athlete, Christian Peters out of Shaw University. He does it all at quarterback. He even plays receiver. And another guy, Larry Williams, the Wildcat quarterback of Bowie State University. Another great player. So I was speaking about Jakeem Smith and what Jakeem Smith can do for Delaware State. So let's get into Delaware State's offense, man. Delaware State's offense is becoming a little high powered. They have a bunch of small, quick dudes. I, I mean, I swear the whole offense is under six foot, but they all quick as hell. Right. You got C.J. Henry, who just took up the starting quarterback spot. He moves uh, Jared Lewis and Talik Bethu. He moves them uh, out of the picture. They just hopped into the transfer portal. C.J. Henry seems to be the guy at quarterback. Last year, he threw for 1,000 yards. Uh, it's pretty good completion percentage at 63% completion. And he has nine touchdowns. So he played every game of the season, almost every game of the season. He was.